Hello everyone, this is Giuseppe Sec, and in this video we're going to be going over insecure deserialization. This can be a pretty complex topic if you're not familiar, so just to get some definitions out of the way. Serialization is a way to convert data into a more easily transmittable format. Basically, we're changing a complex data structure into a stream of bytes so it can be more easily processed or stored by the application. And deserialization is the process of restoring the serialized data to its original format. And once that's done, the web app can interact with the data like it would with any other data. There's a lot of languages that support serialization as well, most notably Java or C Sharp, Ruby, Python, Node.js. Um, just as an aside, Ruby calls serialization marshalling and Python calls it pickling. But anyway, when does deserialization become a vulnerability? Well, when the data that the user can control is deserialized by the application. That actually can introduce a lot of potential attack vectors for a hacker. Anything from like SQL injection to authentication bypass and, and denial of service or even remote code execution. It all depends on what the application is doing with the deserialized data. So for our demonstration, we're going to be working with a Java-based web application. And I know you're thinking Java, uh, verbose, ew, <laughs> but I, I promise you will not have to be familiar with Java in order for this to make sense. So what I'm going to do is just log in right here, check remember me, and uh, now I'll just send like a get class or something like that. And you can see now we have this remember me cookie appended to all our uh, following requests after logging in with the uh, remember me, remember me checked. So anyone who's familiar with Java serialization is going to know that this is a uh, base64 encoded uh, serialized object. And for anyone who isn't familiar with it, let's just do this. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a class called pet and then we have some properties here type and name and breed that, that has some data that it resolves to right and then in the uh, demo class we are creating a new instance of pet called a uh, and then we are creating a file called dseer.sir and uh, the object output stream is what's going to be uh, serializing, basically, the, uh, the object here. Anyway, we're going to compile that. Now we're going to run that. And uh, now we have dsir.sir here. And if we look at it, it just looks like a bunch of gibberish. I mean, we can see some of the... Uh, import hierarchy type stuff going on there, but um, for the most part, it just kind of looks like gibberish, right? But if we look at this in XXD, we can see ACED0005, and this this right here is always going to be, um, this is always going to indicate the beginning of a serialized object when you're, we're using the serializable class, uh, or the serializable library with Java. And if we base64 encode that, um, you can see there's the RO0, just like there was here. This is a recurring pattern in, seri in, in Java objects that are serialized with a serializable method, right? Or, or uh, library. Anyway, let's get an idea of what deserialization looks like now. Uh, yeah. Let's see. That. And, um, let's compile that. And you can see that we have a uh, deserialize the dsir.sir, right? 
anyway, getting back to what's actually going on there. Um, you can see we got the object input stream, and uh, this is basically the beginning of where the vulnerability is going to arise for insecurity serialization. Most notably, the read object method is, it's like a magic method that can, if we, if we were to, for example, create a custom instance of it within the data that was being serialized, this could potentially lead to uh, code execution. So let's demonstrate that now. Do something kind of like, uh, well, let me do that. And uh, here, at the object out uh, object input stream uh, and class not found exception uh, it should be like that and then in that default read object and now we're just gonna be executing like a shell command or something I'm gonna do the uh, Ubuntu equivalent of, of, of running Cal <laughs> something like that All right is everything spelled correctly I hope so anyway let's compile that Ah, okay, I have to do a little bit of editing here. I think that'll be sufficient. Actually, we might even have to... Um... Too bad. Okay. No, that was incorrect. Now we should just be able to run that, and we have uh, executed the calc. <laughs> and again, that occurred because we've created like a custom, uh, a custom instance of the read object method uh, within the uh, object that got serialized and then deserialized. That's essentially what we're going to be doing in the web application, but slightly more complex. What we're going to be using is why so serial though. Um, ooh. There you go. So this is just basically a generator for uh, uh, like, like deserialization gadget type stuff with uh, Java. Anyway, I've already got it on my Raspberry Pi, so I'm just going to run a command kind of like this. And you can see we're using the commons collections because that's actually where, where the serializable library is being imported, right? And we're going to be running a reverse shell, and then we're going to base64 encode the payload. So let me set up that netcat listener. That is a big payload. Um, yeah. And now I'm just going to send this on over to repeater and place the beta, that, that uh, cookie with this. And that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Interesting. I don't think it's the port.
And there we go, there's our connection. You can see that we are Tomcat. Anyway, that's our reverse shell. Pretty neat. Now, let's actually get a better look at what was going on there. Um, opening up, this is, by the way, this is JD GUI. This is what, uh, this is a Java decompiler. If you're not familiar with uh, reversing Java. And the file that we're uh, running this web application from, when you're working with Java web applications, they're going to either be .war files or .ear or even just JSP, right? These are the formats that are like, uh, in the case of the war and the EAR, those are archives that basically zip files that contain the classes and the binaries and the Java and what, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, this is our web app here. JD GUI decompiles it and it, um, let me resize this. No, it should be big enough. We can see the uh, meta.inf, which has metadata, but we're more concerned with the web.inf and the class structure here. I'm going to be looking at, uh, here, just to give you an example of stuff we can look at. Uh, but anyway, we already know that we're looking for the um, read object method. So let's just do a global search. And there we go. So it's going to be under controllers right here, and there is where it occurs. This is the cause of the vulnerability. Basically, there's not any sort of like sanitization or any sort of checking of like what the data that's being passed to it is essentially. And that's kind of what uh, creates the problem. So anyway, I, I hope that's interesting to you guys. I, I'm not super familiar with uh, Java myself, but I can follow the execution flow and that's that's helpful for when you're doing like a, a, a white box test and stuff. But when we're talking about just like black box, you know, it's it's sufficient enough to uh, you know, know about why. So serial no know, know about like where the vulnerabilities are rising from and also to be able to identify uh, serialized objects, right? So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you all.